In today's video, I'm going to show you how to quickly and safely repair any leaky or corroded brake lines. These are the items you need to complete the job. You need to either buy or rent a double flaring toolkit, some scotch bright, some brake line unions, some shop towels, and some brake cleaner. This is what a typical brake union looks like. It consists of three pieces, centerpiece and two brake line fittings. All right, so the first step to this procedure is you need to remove all of this rust and scale that is built up on the brake line. Now, you might be doing this under a car, but it's the same procedure. So what you need to do is you need to take some Scotch-Brite and you need to go ahead and just clean off the brake line really well. Ensure all that dirt and rust is off of the part. After using the Scotch-Brite, you should end up with something like this, a nice scale-free finish. Sometimes, depending on the severity of the case, you need to cut a bigger portion of your brake line off. Because this rusted region is so wide, sometimes your brake line union won't fit. Meaning you need to use two of them, and make a, a cut here and here, and then install two unions with a filler piece in the middle. If that's the case, then what you need to do is you need to go to your parts store and get some some brake line. Now, different cars have different brake line sizes. Just ask the clerk at the counter what's the right size for your car or truck. Take out your tubing cutter and place it where the rust ends. So basically cut here and here. This is what the brake line should look after being cut. What you need to do now is you need to clean up the inside bore. So take a small file or screwdriver and just clean up the inside. You follow that with using a deburring tool. After all that you should end up with a brake line that looks like that. Nice and clean edges. Immediately after you're cutting and cleaning the line take one of your fittings and install it. Alright so after you've installed the fittings on the brake lines Take this out from your kit and either mount it in a vise, like I do, I'm doing here, or you can hold it in your hand, which is most likely the case if you're doing the job underneath the car. But since I'm doing it here on a bench, I'll just quickly run through the steps of how you should do this. And all you have to do is you just apply the same thing underneath your vehicle. All right, so the first thing you need to do is open up the clamp, take your brake line, which in this case is 3 16 and just find the 3 16 hole, and just lightly clamp it into place. Now here, here comes the tricky part. Inside your kit, you're gonna find a bunch of dies here. A bunch of dies. Now the one that we need is 3 16 It even says right on it. Alright, you take your die and if you notice there's two steps. This bottom one and this top one. What you need to ensure is that the top of the brake line is flush with this first step here. just like that. All right, once you set the height, make sure you clamp this down really, really well. This will prevent the brake line from slipping out. All right, here's a little tip. When you go and do your first step of the flare, what I like to do is I like to take some automatic transmission fluid and just put some on the brake line here and put some on the uh, die and then stick it in the line and you take your handle and you slide it over the clamp like this and you just begin to tighten it down and as you tighten it you can see how the flare is actually forming although this is only the first step 
So I'll squeeze it until that second step is flush with the clamp. And then you undo it. And that's what you should end up with. The final step to make the double flare is you take the clamp and just proceed. Tighten down the clamp as far as it'll go. Undo it. And there it is. That's a double flare. Then just undo the clamp. And retrieve the brake line. So after you've completed the flares, take some brake cleaner and just clean the ends off. Make sure that you get rid of all that oil that we had we um sure you get rid of all that oil we put on here. Okay, nothing serious. After you've done that, all you need to do is just assemble it. So take the body and just thread one end in here. Thread in the other end in here. Take some wrenches and just give it a nice snug fit. Okay, do it on both sides. Alright. This is what your completed brake line union job should look like. Easy simple fix and it'll get you down the road. Now there's something I have to mention here is that what we use here is called a brake line union which is this one right here. The way this works if we look inside You can see there's a seat where that double-ended flare that we made sits down on, on both sides. This is one solid piece of brass. These just thread in here, and you just tighten it down snugly like you would any other brake line. What some other shops used to use or I think are still using are these things right here. Now this isn't the right size but this is what's called a compression fitting. Let me just show you what's inside of it. Okay so you have center body, a ferrule, a cap and the same thing on the other side. How this would work is you cut the line just like we did, slip the cap on, slip the ferrule on, do the same thing on the other side and then assemble it to the centerpiece. The reason this is not recommended is because once you apply your brakes you have some upwards of a thousand psi maybe 1500 or 2000 psi going through this brake line. When you need to stop in a hurry and you jam on your brakes what could happen if you use this type of fitting is that the, the splice would just fly off. The reason being, this compression fitting can only hold so much, it's only, made, it's only done by friction. Whereas in the brake line union, it's done by pressing the flare against the seat, like I showed you in here. The brake line union is far more superior to the compression fitting. So never ever use a compression fitting on this type of job, just go out and buy a brake line unit. It's cheap. It's very, very effective in doing the job. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll catch you on the next one.